Blog Talk Radio. Stevie B's Media Production is a part of the Shellcaster Network. The proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ by members of the Churches of Christ. With your host, Stevie R. Butler. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Good evening. We have the world listening to this radio broadcast. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler, and this radio show is being broadcast from Stevie B's Media Production Studio 
in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, just give me a call to the live show at 713-955-0508. If you have any questions or comments from any of my co-hosts or my special guests on this radio show, you can send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com, or you can call Stevie B's Media Production Studio at 910-491-6405. Now, again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ, and you need any assistance in locating a congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and study along with us here on What a Word from the Lord radio show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask you to bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Our most kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, we pray that you will be with my special guest speaker, Edward Keaton, on the broadcast. Also, my co-host, Isa Mullins, as they break unto our listeners the bread of life. We also ask your blessings upon my guest, special guest in the community corner, Juan Langford, as he serves our community as well with his various talents and gifts to uplift our neighbors. We pray that you will bless them and their families that support their efforts. Father, we pray that you will be with our listeners who are tuning in this broadcast via Blog Talk Radio as well as through social media. We pray that they may listen well, that they may consider their eternal stance before you, and that their hearts may be pricked. Now they were asked the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you so much for sending the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're just so grateful for his precious sacrifice on Calvary's cross. We recognize that without such a sacrifice, we would not have a hope of eternal life. Father, we, even now, we recognize that we often fall short of thy will, that we, our flesh is weak. We ask that you to forgive us of any of our transgressions that we repent of. For we pray that you will continue to bless us and keep us in love us all the days of our lives. And that we have been faithful unto death. For we pray that you will save us. For us in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. You are listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the broadcast this evening. In the first segment, my special guest speaker is Edward Keaton. He serves as the Minister Emeritus with the Boulder Crest Church of Christ in Atlanta, Georgia. He'll be making his proclamation of the Gospel of Christ. And in the community corner, my special guest is Juan Lanford. He's with the company Legal Shield. He's a regional director there, and he lives in Greensboro, North Carolina. Looking forward to talking to Juan in that community corner. And in the last segment, my co-host, Isa Mullins, he serves with the Helen Street Church of Christ here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He'll be making his proclamation of the gospel of Christ to close out the show. So open up your Bibles and open your minds, and let's have a great show after the break. The next for you will be that of my special guest speaker, Edward Keaton. Enjoy the show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Will you forgive me? For I've done wrong. And will you accept me, Jesus? As I kneel at your throne, dear Lord, and all of my brothers, he will always criticize and accuse. Yes, he will, but I know that my Jesus, Jesus will he will make me forever new. Hello, 
Cause I'm ready at oh, my bidding, Lord. Lord, hear my, my friend, please. Cause you're the God of a second chance. I see them cry, and they each have a stone, dear Lord, but you knelt beside me, Jesus, and my fears are all gone, praise God, cause you give me peace, sir, the In Jesus, Jesus sweet compassion, compassion. I'm the I is strong enough to clean me up on the door again. Please me free from the stain of all of my sin. I'm at oh, my bidding. Oh. Lord, hear me, my Cause you're my God. Ooh, I'm thankful for my God. I'm grateful No more doubt, no more guilt, no. So I ask the Lord to you. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that same book says that there's none righteous, no, not one. See, if you're honest with yourself, you'll admit that we've all needed a second chance. And it was only because of his grace and his mercy that we're here today. Because the Lord is long-suffering, not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to and see, repentance, that's the key. Because in repentance, that's where you learn to turn around. And God gives you a second chance. You turn from selfishness. Turn towards godliness. You turn from anger. Turn toward joy. You turn from hatred. And turn toward love. My brother, my sister, God will give you a second chance. Give you just time. Turn around. Oh, 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 no. Till you hear. Well, but you got to turn. Turn around. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Well, here am I, Jimmy. You 
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now my special guest speaker, Edward Keaton, and his subject, Runaway Child, Running Wild. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Butler, for this glorious opportunity. It is my great pleasure uh, to be able to come to you tonight in uh, such a way, hopefully, that uh, the text will be explained clearly. Uh, I would have you to meet me at the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Our primary text will be that of verse 11 down to verse number 32. Uh, But prior to this, we want to give you some sense of what's going on and uh, some context. Uh, And the context is that Jesus had already presented several parables prior to chapter number 15. Uh, And in verse number 1 of 15, we can see that there were some who were murmuring uh, because they felt that if, in fact, Jesus was someone special and that he was a man of God, why would he be spending time uh, with publicans and sinners? Uh, Because this class of individuals, they were hated, they were disdained. The Bible says, then drew near unto all to him, all the publicans and the sinners to hear him. So at least those who knew they were sinners, who knew they were not in touch with God, who knew they needed to make some corrections, they were the ones who gathered up near unto Jesus to hear him. But the Pharisees and the scribes, who were of a class, who thought they were better than the average citizen, they murmured and they complained about Jesus, saying that this man received sinners and eateth with them. Here is a teaching point here, uh, my friends, and that is how can Jesus or how can we impact the lives of those around us if, in fact, we don't spend time with them interacting? Jesus knew They needed him. Not only did they need him, he was there accessible to them. Listen to what Jesus and how he responded. And he spake his parable saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep? So here Jesus is pointing out the value of sheep, not only the value of sheep, but then we can see the value in a greater sense when he talks about leaving the ninety and nine and going and searching For the one, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it? Sheep were very valuable, and often the shepherd would have not only his sheep, but other sheep of the community. Why were they so valuable? Number one, a sheep could be used. You could eat the meat. You could use the bones for soap. And you could use the skin and the wool for clothing. So these sheep were important. So Jesus here expresses uh, the importance of leaving the ninety and nine in the wilderness uh, and going after the one that is lost. Here we see a picture of Christ speaking to these Jews who in fact were lost, but they did not know. And so he talks about the sheep having wandered off. In the next parable, uh, he talks about a woman who had a coin, and she lost a coin. But I would have you also to notice in verse number 7, the principle of repentance is talked about. Jesus here, in this parable, even though uh, the meaning is veiled to some who are not enlightened, he said in verse number 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And those who were listening, these scribes and these Pharisees who thought they were better, who had elevated themselves above these other so-called sinners, they needed God also, but like many men even on today, when your morality will blind you to the fact that you need Jesus sometimes worse than the next man. But this woman lost the coin. He said in verse number 8, Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, 
does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. Jesus here is talking about and advancing the point of the value and the need to search for that and find that which is lost. The Jewish community at this time had wandered away from the precepts and principles of the law of Moses, even giving rise to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and others who elevated themselves above ordinary men. So here he is advancing the idea of seeking that which is lost. And then he says uh, in verse number 9, And when the woman has found it, she has looked diligently for it, like he's looking for lost sinners in this particular instance. When the woman has found it, she called her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, he mentions again the principle and the avenue to God of repentance. In verse number 7, he talks about repentance, which is valuable today. In getting right with God, getting on God's right side, there needs to be repentance. A man needs to be, a woman needs to have a heart of contrition before they can get right with God. And that is to admit that I've done wrong, that I have lived wrong, I have thought wrong, uh, and repentance uh, opens the heart of God to receive you after baptism. Listen, in verse number 10, he says, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over every one sinner that repented. Verse number 7, he talks about repentance and that there will be joy in heaven. In verse number 10, he talks about repentance and there will be joy uh, in the presence of the angels of God. At, at any rate, both of those Verses are talking about the value and the excitement in heaven when men and or women come to a point of understanding that they need to get right with God and they have a heart of contrition. But verse number 11 leads us into the parable of what we call uh, the lost son. Now, we have talked about this. We have heard this preached over the years. We called it the uh, the parable of the prodigal son, but the word prodigal is not mentioned, but we know the boy was lost. The boy was lost, but I want you to look very closely uh, at what's being said here in verse number 11 all the way to verse number 32, and I hope that time will allow us to work through this so that we can see all of the precious jewels that we can find in this text. The Bible says in verse number 11, a certain man had two sons. So we're dealing with the, uh, the narrative here. The dynamics in this narrative is that this man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods uh, that followed to me. And he divided. Notice now, the boy went to his daddy not having the patience to wait until his father passes, it's almost like he's saying, Father, I can't wait until you die to get what's mine. I want you to give me mine now. And so he was ready to leave his father. He was ready to leave that situation. He was ready to leave wherever he was. He was ready to leave his elder brother. And notice what the text says at the bottom of verse number 12. And he divided unto them his living. It was his money, his inheritance, he divided unto them. So the text is suggesting that at the time the youngest brother came and asked for his inheritance then, he wanted his right then, that he gave to the elder brother also, keep this in mind, the elder brother is left back there with his father, but the younger fella, the younger brother, took off with his money and headed off in a new direction. Now, there's a lot of diamonds in this text, and one of them would be, we'll get to that hopefully, is why did the young man want to leave? What was it on his mind? He had been raised right, you would think. Uh, his father seemingly was well off, you would think. Uh, he was in a situation where he was saved, but he decided 
He wanted to try something new. And I'm here to tell you tonight, church members and friends, there's nothing new. We're trying something, there's nothing bad, rather, we're trying something new. The Bible says in verse number 13, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. He got all of his stuff, all his, his belongings. He had the money laid aside that his father had given to him, and he took that along with his other belongings, and he took his journey. The Bible says he took a journey into a far country. What does that mean? Well, he went as far away from his daddy as he could go. He went as far away from that situation as he could get. He no longer wanted to be in that situation. He didn't want to be around his daddy. He didn't want to be around his brother. He went into a far country. But the Bible says, and there, here was the sad part, there he wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, what's the point here? The boy... He was curious. He had a sense of courage. He had some gumption. He had some moxie. Had a little money in his pocket. Uh, he had some courage. He had a sense of adventure, but he did not have a plan. No plan. You've got to have a plan. And why are we saying that? Because if you don't have a plan, there's no telling where you're going to end up. He was, in fact, a runaway child. And I remember a song years ago about the temptations, runaway child running wild, and, and we reflect on that. But in that song, the child who ran away was running away uh, from something that he didn't like either, but he didn't have a plan. But this boy seemingly had a better situation than the child who ran away. But he ran away with the endorsement of his father. His father was a good man. He came to his father, and keep this in mind, his father really didn't have to give him a dime because the Bible says in verse number 12, he divided unto them his living. It was the father's money. It was the father's money that was laid aside to be given to them traditionally when the father passes off the scene. But the younger brother came to him, or the younger son, rather, and he says, Father, I won't mind now. And this is a picture of impatience. Uh, it's a picture uh, of someone who was ready to go. It was a picture of someone who was ready to leave a familiar setting, strike out on his own, had a pocket full of money, as it were. But when he got out there, he found out that it's not what he thought it was. And when he had spent all, watch this now, in verse number 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Now, his money got funny, and his change got strange. He, not only did his money run out of church, but a famine came about. Well, not, he didn't have any money, and no one around him had any money, and he couldn't get anything from anybody. Now, there's another song that comes to mind, Nobody Wants You When You're Down and Out. And this boy was down, and he was out. He had money in the beginning, but he did not have a plan. And I'm thinking on something Solomon said at one time that your money would take wings and fly towards the heavens. In verse number 15, and he went, he was desperate. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. Now, here he was, a Jewish boy. Not only was he not to eat hogs, but he was not to be even near them or touch them. But let me tell you one thing. When you are hungry and when you have run out of resources, you'll be surprised at what you will do. So he went from a bowler to a beggar. He ran out of money and went and joined himself to a citizen of that country because he was in the beggar mode then. 
He was in the beggar mode. Why? Because all of his living, all that inheritance, all that money had been squandered. The boy was out there. He left with prosperity, but he ended up, because he didn't have a plan, he ended up in the hog pen of a stranger and went and joined himself. You know what I thought about when I read that? Uh, it's almost it's tantamount uh, to a stray dog coming up to your back porch uh, and hanging around the back porch until you throw out some scraps, and if you hang around long enough, uh, he'll understand that you will eventually feed him. And so he went and joined himself to a stranger, and the stranger sent him into the hog pen to feed the swine. That's how low he had fallen. He was a person who was a somebody, and now he's a nobody. But guess what? The providence of God was working for this boy, and at a certain point, he woke up. Look at verse number 17. And when he came to himself, the boy had his epiphany. He had his breakthrough. He had his awakening in the hog pen. And every now and then, the Lord will take you through some stuff of your own doing before you can recognize how good you had it before you left it. You have some folk now that have left the church, and they're in the hog pens of sin, in the cesspools of sin, and God, I'm hoping to God that at a certain point they'll wake up and realize that they need to go back home like this boy. Verse 17 again, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I'm over here, I'm paraphrasing, about to starve to death. And then he said, I'm going back home. Let me tell you something, church. It's good to have a home that you can go back to. It's good to know that you have a father like the God we serve that will allow us to mess up, to fall into our pits, or to squander our money, to wallow in the hog pit of sin, to get all muddied up and nasty up. But let me tell you one thing, and here's a shouting point for you. I don't care how dirty you get or how far you fall or how low you go. As long as you are living, you can always repent of your sins and come back to a glorious, giving, loving, providential God. And then he said, I will arise, and I'm going back home. And I will say unto my father, at least the boy was getting his speech together. He's going to go back to his father and say, Father, I, I have, I've sinned. And I'm not looking for anything special from you. I, I know I have squandered my inheritance. I know I have blown it over. Just, just let me come back and serve you in another capacity. Let me be as one of your hired servants. Now, keep in mind, his inheritance is gone. His brother still has his, and not only does his brother have his inheritance, when the father dies by right, all the property and all the holdings go back to the elder brother, because the first younger brother, rather, he has squandered all of his and given up all rights to any inheritance. But isn't God good? Look at this now. Look at verse number 20. And the Bible says, his father saw him coming a fall. And the book says he fell on his neck and kissed him. Don't you know, and some of you on the line know how much you love your children, and some of our children right now are wayward. Some of our children have left the church, but you never stop thinking about them. You never stop hoping. You never stop praying on their behalf that God would touch their hearts. Because let me tell you one thing. I don't care how wayward your child gets, you never stop loving the one that you have fathered or mothered. And so the Bible says the father saw him fell on his neck and said, son, and said, the son said unto his father, I have sinned. The boy admitted that he has done wrong. But listen, let's not be too hard on the boy. He made a mistake. And how many of us on this line Never made a mistake. How many of us have squandered uh, our resources? How many of us have fallen down and fallen backward, but the goodness of God helped us get back up? Yes, he made a 
mistake. Yes, he made a bad move. Yes, he squandered his money. But let me tell you one thing. There are some lessons, church, that you only learn by way of experience. And the boy went over there bright. There's another song I'm thinking about, Bright Lights in Big City, went to my baby's head. That boy was curious as to what was over there on the other side. I've been there. You've been there. We want to know what's over there on the other side. I heard somebody say that the grass might look greener on the other side of the hill, but it's just as difficult to mow. So the boy came back home, and his father uh, called everybody together, had a banquet of sorts for him. They parted. He said, bring forth the best robe, put this robe on this boy, uh, and then put on, uh, give him a ring on his finger, put some shoes on his feet. For well, I want you to understand, the way this boy went out, he had clothes on his back, he was looking good and maybe smelling good, had all of his clothing uh, and, and that he took with him, all his belongings, but he came back tattered, raggedy, hungry, and barefooted. And don't you know that life can beat you down like that? It can cause you to be barefoot and naked. Don't we realize that the way of God is the right way? Don't you realize that what God has given man uh, to do and the path that God has placed us in is the right path? Seek ye the old path, ask for the right way, and find that way and walk therein. This is what Jeremiah said. And so we need to recognize the boy made a mistake. Now, listen to this. Let's not be too hard on the ones that are battling their demons, people that are battling drugs, people that are battling pornography, people that are battling fornication, people that are battling adultery. Everybody has something. And your sin or your mistake might not be so public, but everybody has that sin. And each one of us ought to lay aside that sin and that weight that would so easily beset us as we run the race uh, looking for Jesus and looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Everybody has something. This boy was adventurous. He just didn't have great wisdom, and he didn't have a plan. Listen to me close. In verse number 23, The Bible says, bring forth the fattest calf. This is what his father uh, had issued. Uh, Bring forth the fattest calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry because it was time for celebration. And we look back at verse 7 and verse number 10. Jesus points out the joy in heaven when one sinner repents, even in our churches, when somebody has been lost and they have been walking in the wayward path, and when they come back, there should be a celebration, not looking at them, trying to ask, but celebrate with them because they were lost. Now they are found. They were blind. Now they can see. So we realize that there is a great spiritual lesson here. Now, watch this now. When they get to around verse number 24, he said, this is my son. He was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. So it's time to celebrate. Why? Because the father no longer has to worry about where his son is. The father does not any longer have to worry about whether or not the boy is doing all right. He doesn't have to worry about the boy's health and his well-being. Why? Because he can see him. He's back home. Let's celebrate. And let me tell you one thing. We need to celebrate and love on each other now, family church members, friends, because we don't know what tomorrow might bring. I'm going to wrap this up. But look now, we have three people in this narrative. We have the younger brother who took off and took his inheritance with him. He's back home now. And then we have a compassionate father who was welcoming this boy back home. The father was in, he was in a fit of jubilation. He was excited because this young boy had been come back home, but the, the elder brother has some issues. The elder brother has some issues because he 
responded to his father, you never killed the padded calf for me. And the cat padded calf uh, is the one that, that animal that's been set aside for special occasions. It had to be a high honor to kill the fatted calf. Now, when the brother complained, I'm just trying to expedite the text here, but when the brother complained, he didn't say anything about the robe and the ring and the shoes that had been given his brother, but he responded to his daddy by saying, this is your son, not my brother. You know, you never killed a fatted calf for me, but when your son comes back, he walked off and left us, the two of us. But when he comes back, uh, you're celebrating and you kill the fatted calf. Verse number 28 says he was angry and would not go in because when the brother came back, he was out in the field. And so he sent one of his minions in to see what was going on. But he would not go in to the dwelling and celebrate with his brother and his father and the others. But let me show you something. Here is a picture of God. The elder brother was angry. He was upset because he couldn't justify in his own mind why his daddy was celebrating this boy who had run off, left them to run the property, left them, took the money, and ran with it, runaway child, and now he's back and you're going to celebrate? What better time is it to celebrate? Certainly the boy was lost, now he's found. He was blind, now he's seen. It's not a time to scold him. If anybody needed some scolding, it's the elder brother who couldn't understand why we are celebrating the return of this boy when he walked off and left us. What's going on here? It appears to me that the elder brother didn't have a whole lot of care for the younger one. And then as we look at why was this boy in the first place so insistent about leaving his daddy and his elder brother. Could it be that there was a rift of bad blood between the elder brother and the younger brother? We don't know. But whatever the cause was, whatever the motivation was, the boy said, I want to leave here. But now he's back. He has a robe on his shoulders. He has shoes on his feet. He has a ring. And now he's sitting eating the fatted calf. But the younger brother, the older brother rather, is angry. We need to look at this man's anger, and we'll never know because the text cuts off abruptly. Maybe Dr. Phil could figure this boy out. But listen to what the text says. In verse number 30, I'm closing, he said, the angry brother. And as soon as thy brother was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots. Now, here's the question. How did he know how his brother spent the money? Well, he said, well, he spent it with harlots, with prostitutes. Uh, and, and you killed a fatted calf for him, and he's gone off uh, and spent all the money. And he's crossed town making it rain on some female, and when he gets back, you're going to celebrate uh, what he has done. But what the elder brother didn't realize, daddy is not celebrating the wasting of money, but daddy is celebrating the saving of a life, and that life is his son, and that is time for celebration. In this we see a curious brother who took off, devoured, and used all of his inheritance. We see a compassionate father who fell on his neck when he got back. Thank God he had a home to go back to. And as wayward Christians, we need to be thankful to God because God's arms are always open. As long as you're living, you can always go back home. I don't care how far you've fallen, as I have mentioned earlier, or what you have done is good. And it is a shouting point to realize that whatever you have done, you can go back home to God, and he'll receive you if you have a heart of contrition. Lastly, in verse number 31, the father explains to him 
He said, look, I've been here with you all the time. I've been right by your side. And in the way, this is, he's puffing himself up about what he has done and the mistakes that he has not made. If that boy hadn't left and went to a far country, we do know that he experienced loss and he woke up, had his epiphany in a hog pen. And maybe that's how God planned it because God's hand evidently was on this ball all the time. But the elder brother stayed with the father, which is admirable. But listen, in verse 31, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. Look, look at this now. And all that I have is yours. <coughs> and he literally meant that. Everything that daddy had belonged to the elder son because the youngest boy had given up his inheritance. But when the daddy passes, the elder brother still could have it in his heart to share what daddy left him if he didn't have all of this poison in his heart for his younger brother. I hope you all are seeing this. Lastly, he said it was fit that we should make merry. Look at this. Look at this now. And be glad for this thy brother. Now notice the elder brother didn't refer to him as my brother. He spoke to the daddy and said, your son. But then the daddy comes back and makes a correction in verse number 32. No, this is not so much my son. This is your brother. Let me remind you, you came both from me. It was fit that we should make merry. And be glad, for this thy brother was dead. He was dead in sin and is alive again. He was lost and he's found. And beyond verse number 32, Jesus starts talking about something else. And so in this parable, we can see one family dysfunction. We can see that the family is not always perfect. We can also see that there's sometimes always one who gets away with all kind of stuff and he still uh, is in mama's heart and daddy's heart. You know, that, that's typical stuff. But I think along with uh, everything else we need to recognize in this, uh, this text is that Jesus said if you don't forgive those who trespass against you, Neither will I forgive you for the trespasses you have committed. This brother was offended and angry that his brother came home and they celebrated. And I get the sense that he didn't really love his little brother. I don't know, y'all could read it some other kind of way, but if he loved him like I love my little brother, there's no way that I would have reacted like that. I'm a, I, I might have had a problem with the party myself. I don't know, you understand? But I would have been glad to see him. But we'll never know until we get to where Jesus is and we can ask him what really happened. Now, as I close, this text is familiar to most of us. It has a lot of teaching points that I didn't even hit because we have to look at uh, time and we're trying to expedite. But it speaks to a compassionate father who was understanding and that our children have to go out on their own sometimes and they will make mistakes. They're going to do some stuff you don't like from time to time, but you're not going to stop loving them. The same way you have made some blunders in your Christian existence, God didn't stop loving you. Some of us have done some awful stuff. I, I, I know I'm in that group myself. I've done some bad stuff. But I'm glad that I have the kind of compassionate, loving, forgiving, merciful God who will receive me back and has received me back a number of times. But for those outside the body, what you need to do, you need to repent. And you need to make that great confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died for your sins as well as those of the entire world. Be baptized in water for the remission of those transgressions. For we are all the children of God by faith, and as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Baptism is absolutely necessary 
to enter into the kingdom of God. It is my prayer and my hope that wherever you are, uh, under the sound of my voice, that you find someone within the body of Christ that will lead you to the waters of baptism, have your sins washed away, become a member of the church of Christ before time runs out. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray with me before we uh, stop this message here. And we're going to pray right now, and my hope is that this prayer will be a blessing to you. Dear God, my Father in heaven, I, we come to you at this time, dear God, in thanksgiving for this day, for the blessing of your word. And Father, we're hoping and praying that, dear God, something has been said that will be a blessing to those who are in the body, even those who are outside of the body, Father, as we think about the value of a lost soul. Bless us now, dear God. Bless the retention of the word. Bless those, Father, who are responsible for uh, this platform and this radio program. Bless Brother Butler, Father, as he moves forward in life, seeking to do a good work through uh, this particular medium. In the mighty and blessed name of Jesus, we ask it all and give many thanks. Amen and amen. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. The Community Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, this segment is designed to simply tell our listeners just what products and services are offered in our communities and how you can contact these various vendors for their services. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you'd be surprised to know just what products and services that people have to offer that are sitting right there among us in our congregation. This is one of my favorite segments because we get a chance to hear what are some of the things that people are doing to serve in our community. We've had people on this show who are in financial services, legal services, authors, college consultants, professional boxers. We've had NFL players, uh, casting producers for television shows, farmers, comedians, you name it, we've had them on this broadcast. So we just want to make the saints aware of just what services are available to them. Now, my special guest in the community corner this evening is Juan Lansford. He's from Greensboro, North Carolina. He's the regional director there for legal services there in Greensboro. Juan, welcome to the community corner. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, why don't you tell us now, how is it that you got involved in Legal legal Shield? Man, 20 years ago, I think that was that's, that's the story for me. I, I, you know, I, I always tell people that the very thing that I needed uh, that that particular time, it was something that basically at that, that particular time was a college football coach. And I actually worked for numerous universities and actually in different states. And one thing that I realized, it didn't matter what state I actually uh, was in at that particular time, when I left, there was always some legalities that I had to deal with. And so I was actually staying in Raleigh, working in Greensboro, and Next thing I know, I had some legal situations going on. I met a gentleman. He shared with me the service. And long story short, the service that I needed, I like to say it's, it's, it's mighty funny how something that you need turns into something that you end up doing as a career. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, part-time, I started with them for the summer. Uh, the summer turned into a fall. And next thing you know, 20 years later, something I started part-time for something to do in the summer ended up being a full-time career. So that's how I got involved with legal shit. Now, as a regional director now, what is your duties and what how how far and wide do you cover for your responsibility? Okay. Yeah, I, you know, our whole job and, and responsibility is to educate and truly educate and inform the public about what is available and not only what is available but how the services work. Uh, and our area it encompasses a lot of different counties, but my area in particular, uh, you know, we go all the way back towards Salisbury. Uh, from Salisbury, we go as far as up towards Statesville, and we cut across the North Wilkesboro. And then my region runs all the way down through Scotland County, Rayford, uh, Clinton, I guess you would say Garland, all the way pretty much to the Wilmington area, and all the way up to Elizabeth City and all up on that area of the coast and then back up towards, you know, coming back towards uh, Greensboro to that market as well. So, again, it's, it's pretty much about half the state in my region, I like to say. But our job is to truly just educate and do everything we can to make sure the masses are aware, but most importantly, they know how this, this system that we have works. Now, uh, now we have a mutual friend, uh, Daryl Ray Davis. I called him last night and told him that you was coming on the show tonight, and he was shocked. How did you get him on the show? <laughs> so, yeah, he was really surprised. 
So do they. Yeah. Hey, I yeah, that's good. I mean, Mr. Dare, we, we go way back, I, I guess. I like to tell him when I first moved to Greensboro, uh, he was one of the few individuals that I met when I first got there because, again, like I said, I started in Raleigh, so we go way back, almost 20 years. Right. So, right. Now tell my listeners now how they can get in contact with you for your services. Yes, uh, you can actually, my direct line is area code 336-362-9703 or you can call me on my office line and that number is area code 336 355 8588. And also, if you want to email me, you can email me at Juan, J U A N, Langford, L A N G F O R D, at LegalShillAssociate.com or Juan Langford at gmail.com. Either one of those will work to actually be able to get in contact with you by email. Hey, Juan, thank you, man, for joining us here on the Community Corner. Certainly appreciate it. All right. Thank you for your time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned to What a Word from the Lord radio show. My co-host, Isa Mullins, is up next. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. And if you miss me from singing, sing it. And you can't find me nowhere. nowhere. Come on up to glory. I'll be singing the best. Yes, I will. And I know the Lord, He will grieve me over yonder, over on the other shore.
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, my co-host, Isa Mullins, and his subject, How Big Is Your God? Good evening. God bless you. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here on the Steve Butler Podcast. I want to thank you, Brother Steve, for giving me the opportunity to share the Lord's Word this evening. I want to go ahead and jump into my lesson uh, this evening. Uh, As he said, my lesson is titled, How Big Is Your God? How Big Is Your God? God, how you handle life depends on how big you believe God is. If he's too small, you will live in constant anxiety, thinking that everything depends on you. Your outlook will be dictated by your surroundings, or worse, your critics. Without the acceptance of a loving God, you will be a slave to other people's opinions. You'll constantly crave recognition because you do not understand that your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you, Matthew 6 and 4. We offer prayer without faith. Do we uh, work without passion, service without joy? We mistakenly have suffering without hope, which results in fear, retreat, loss of vision, and failure to persevere. When Goliath threatened the Israelites, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. First Samuel 7, 17 and 11, they didn't think their God was big enough for the job, but not David. Let no one's heart fail. Your servant will fight this Philistine. The Lord who saved you from the lion and the bear will save us now. First Samuel 17, 32 and 37. You can face anything when you know what David knew. The battle is the Lord, and he's never lost one yet. My brothers and my sisters, I want to let you know tonight how big my God is. My my God is big enough to forgive the unforgivable. How many times has someone done something to us, and we seem to never be able to let it go? Or we see that person differently, no matter what changes that person has done or how many times they have asked for forgiveness. That person who has done wrong, and it it seems like you can never, ever get clean or forgive yourself, so you fall deeper and deeper into self-loathing, insecurity, and depression. And many go so far as to kill themselves, seeing no other way out. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 reads, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Matthew 5, 23 to 24 reads, So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Matthew 6 and 14 says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Isaiah 1 and 18 says, Come now, let us settle this matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, They shall be like wool. My brothers and sisters, please know that my God is bigger than any sin that you have or can do. He loves you so much, and he stands with his arms open wide, ready to receive you back home. And for those of us who find it hard to forgive others, remember, we all need forgiveness every day, for every hour. So please don't hold back forgiveness when you need it yourself. Amen. The second half of Colossians 3 and 13 has the perfect answer. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. God has forgiven us, and not just for the small, insignificant things. He forgave us everything. God died on the, Jesus died on the cross to forgive every offense.
sins you and I have ever committed against God or our fellow humans. If we've accepted Jesus as our Savior, God has already forgiven us without hesitation or exception. Whatever we've done and whatever our motivation was, he forgives us, and he expects us to do the same. In Matthew 18, Peter asked the Lord how many times he should forgive someone who sinned against him. Should he be willing to forgive someone seven times? Jesus answered, 70 times seven. Jesus then told a parable about a servant who borrowed millions of dollars from the king, and he could not pay it back. The king forgave him and canceled his debt. But then the servant wouldn't forgive one of his co-workers who owed him a few hundred dollars. And when the king heard what happened, he was, he was angry and incensed and had the servant brought in and punished for not having the same mercy in his heart that the king had demonstrated. Jesus showed Peter that no matter how long the offense is or how often someone hurts us, God expects us to forgive. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you, Ephesians 4 and 32. The next thing you should do is release the offender to God. Repent of your desire to punish or to take revenge. Let God deal with the offender. Focus on today rather than the past. Let this offender off the hook. Declare God as judge over the person and the situation. Romans 12 and 19 says, do not take revenge, my friend, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. What also you can do is bless the offender. Apply God's forgiveness. Trust and reconcile when possible. But realize that forgiveness doesn't always mean that we have to relate to the person in the future. In some cases, this is not possible. Know God's protection and justice. We are God's called out people who know we are in Christ and walk in love with God and one another. We become partakers of his resurrected life. Forgiveness is essential if we want to walk in personal and corporate revival. Now, my brothers and sisters, I need to let you know that my God is bigger than any problem, pain, depression, or evil. Trouble comes in all forms, family problems, financial problems, emotional stress, or personal illness, just to name a few. And sometimes it seems like an onslaught of bad situations and other times it is little things that happen every now and then. Troubles are what we call them, but God calls them trials and testings. We are not to cope with our troubles. We are to give them to God. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7 reads, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you, casting the whole of your care and all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4, if you cope, that means you hang on to it. If you give it to God, you can let it go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which, which we call ourselves comforted by God. Isaiah 41, 10 to 13 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. My God is big enough. Disaster came from my left and disease came from the right. But my God is big enough to protect me through the night. The giants may rage and the seas may swell, but God tells me not to fear, for he cannot. 
fail. I have been sick, but disease had to flee. My God was too big for it to ever take hold of me. Depression casted a curtain over my face, but all the pain God erased. In the name of God, all evil had to run because of my Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son. My God told me if I would focus on him, he would be my guide. That's why I keep the Holy Ghost deep, way down inside. No matter what this world may bring or how anyone can figure, my God is and will always be bigger. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trials that you are going through, as if something strange will happen to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. First Peter chapter 4. 12 through 13. When we give something to God, it feels wonderful because we are essentially giving the burden, worries, and cares of that thing over to him. We are doing what Philippians 4 and 6 instructs us to do, which is not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, presenting your request to God. And when we do this, We feel an overwhelming peace, knowing that it is in his hand, which is what the next verse explains will happen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. But my brothers and sisters, the problem lies, however, when we take back that thing that we gave to him in the first place. Whether it be taking back control of something we surrendered to him, trying to take care of ourselves in an area, trying to figure it out our own way, when we initially ask for his direction. All of these things will cause us to take back the very thing that we gave to God. If you have found yourself to be burdened down and anxious or worried about any area of life, I believe this message is for you. God wants you to know tonight that you were never meant to handle everything on your own which is why you feel weighed down with the cares of this life. If you have not already, pray about that thing that you're worried about and release it into God, knowing that he has promised to take care of you. Ask him to show you if there's anything you can do and leave the rest to him. If you have already prayed about and given any area of life to the Lord, but you find yourself still worrying about it, then it is most likely because you'll try to take on that care of that thing by trying to deal with it on your own. Recognize that he has promised to take care of you, guide you, and provide for you. Release it once and for all over to him. If you have found yourself burdened down, please give it all to God and let it go completely. Remember tonight, If you forget everything, God is bigger than all of your problems. And all he wants to do is take control of your life and give you rest and give you peace. If anything you heard tonight will cause you to reflect upon yourself and you realize that you are far away from Christ and you are already in a member of the Church of Christ and All you need to do is repent, and and God will forgive you of your sins. If you're not a member of of the Church of Christ this evening, the only thing you need to do is hear the gospel according to Romans 10 and 17, believe the gospel according to John 20 and 31, Hebrews 11 and 6, repent of your sins, Luke 13, Acts 17 and 30, confess faith in Jesus Christ, Romans 10 and 10, Matthew 10 and 13, be baptized according to Galatians 3, 27, Mark 16, 16, and Acts 2, 38. And last but not least, be faithful unto death, Revelations 2 and 10. May the word that you heard tonight be a blessing upon your souls, your families, and your very lives. May God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Amen. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. There's a land beyond the river that we call the 
sweet forever. And we only reach that shore by faith's decree. One by one we'll gain the portal, there to dwell with the immortal. When they ring those golden bells for you and There's a land, There's a land beyond the river that we call forever. And we only, and we only reach that shore by faith decree. In that far, sweet forever. Oh, just beyond, just beyond the shining river. from the Lord Radio Show. Is your congregation in need of lending for a building or expansion project? As your partner and advocate, Diversified Financial Network will take the time to understand your unique situation and develop a financing solution that meets your specific needs. It's an exciting time for your congregation, and what you need is a company with expertise in church financing early in the process. Call us today at 1-866-513-6665 or visit us at www.diversifiedfinancegroup.com. These are the announcements for the events and activities in the Churches of Christ. If you'd like to have your events and activities announced on this radio broadcast, please contact me at Stevie B's Meat Production Studio at 910-491-6405. Or send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. Due to the coronavirus outbreak, I will not be making any public announcements until further notice for the events and activities regarding the public meetings and assemblies, but I will be making announcements regarding the events and activities happening on social media. Uh, just one announcement here at the 500 Helen Street Church of Christ here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They have begun meeting in their building, and the services begin in the morning at 10 a.m. for worship service. And after their worship service, the Bible study soon after. On Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be a nationwide gospel call that's sponsored by the Hill Highland Heights Church of Christ there in Houston, Texas. And the telephone number to this call is 857-216-6700. And the access code is 328-497. This is a nationwide outreach to those who are not members of the Churches of Christ. 
and the speakers will be presenting a basic salvation message for them to learn what they must do in order to be saved, as well as information regarding the churches of Christ. In addition, it's intended to edify and strengthen the faith of those who are not Christians. On Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, the Delcrest Church of Christ in San Antonio, Texas, presents the Women's Virtual Bible Class, and that class will be held on www.zoom.com. The class ID number is 821-3692-8262. And then on a daily basis from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, the Ladies in Christ prayer line hosted by the Church of Christ in Lafayette, Louisiana. And the telephone number to this prayer line is 605-472-5203. And my co-host on the Gospel Light Radio Show, his name is Steve Cordo. He has a new book entitled God Grace in You. And you can order this new book from the 21st Century Christian Catalog. There will be a spring-summer series every fourth Wednesday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. This will be a preacher's panel discussion. Join Minister Michael Crusoe as he moderates a series of discussions. Featuring seasoned preachers in the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ. And the topic under discussion will be expanding the role of women in Christian worship. A word from the Lord. And coming soon to Stevie B's media production, I'll be beginning some new shows that will be kicking off in the fall. Beginning on August the first will be kicking off a new show entitled Just Say It, and that show will be hosted by Michelle Marco from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, co-hosted by Dr. Louis Lugo from Tampa, Florida, and also co-hosted by Cheryl Grossland from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And this show will air on Monday night, the time to be announced. And also on August the 31st, kick off a new show by Kelly Fletcher. That show will be a part of the Tuesday night show that airs here on Blog Talk Radio, but this show will air every fourth Tuesday of the month, and it'll be the Kelly Fletcher Show. And that'll be followed by, on September the 6th, we have a new show, the Edward Keaton Show, and Dr. Edward Keaton was speaking earlier in this program. You got a chance to hear him earlier tonight, and his show will kick off on September the 6th, and that show will air every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Brother King will be discussing theology, racism, and politics. And just a program reminder, Stevie B's Me Production Presents. We're airing live shows here on Blog Talk Radio every Tuesday at from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll be hosting a live show, What a Word from the Lord radio show. And each week I have a guest speaker on this broadcast from the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ who will be presenting a message from the Word of God. Also, I have the Community Corner segment. This segment was designed for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services for our community. I also have three co-hosts on this show. Luke Gilbert, he's the evangelist for the Oakbrook Park Church of Christ there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And my newest co-host, Shauna Otis from the Great Way Church of Christ there in Nashville, Tennessee. She has the Mid-Tennessee Singles Ministry. And that uh, segment will air every third Tuesday of the month. And also my newest co-host, Isa Mullins, from the Helen Street Church of Christ here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And then on Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, the Gospel Light Radio Show. And I have eight co-hosts on this radio show that will be presenting messages from the Word of God. And each week I have two of my co-hosts on the air with me. I'm also taking questions from my social media platform on Facebook that I'll be posing to one of my co-hosts on this live show. And then on Friday night at our new time from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast radio show. And on this radio show, I'm playing some of the world's greatest acapella gospel music artists, the sweet sounds of voices. And we also have the Story Glory segment every first Friday of the month where I'm interviewing the artists that we're playing on this broadcast. And coming up on July the 2nd, this is a tentative schedule here of my special guest in that Story Glory segment will be Thurman Metter from Abilene, Texas. And also on the third Friday of the month, I'm doing my top 20 countdown show for the month 
of July, on July the 15th. Now, we did not have a Top 20 Countdown show this past Friday night. I was doing a special tribute show to one of my staff members. I'm not sure if any if you all are aware of this, but she was killed in a car wreck here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She was hit head on by a drunk driver. Her name was Linda Dilly. And she wrote all of the questions for all of the artist interviews that we do on this broadcast. And we're certainly going to miss uh, Linda on this radio show. Our prayers and condolences go out to her family. Also, if you'd like to be a sponsor for any of these radio shows, I have a new sponsorship manager. Her name is Michelle Marco from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Her telephone number is 954-687. Four seven zero five. You'd like to be a sponsor for any of these radio shows? I'd like to give a shout out to all of my sponsors. We certainly appreciate all of our sponsors. Sharon Norwood from Chicago, Illinois, but that's Memorial Friendly Director of Crematory Services from the Southern Texas. Stanley Phillips from Little Rock, Arkansas. Cheryl Marat from Charlotte, North Carolina. Von Blazing Cracker Goose from Nashville, Tennessee. Melvin Jackson from High Point, North Carolina. Marquise Allman from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Stephanie Booker Wilson from Greensboro, North Carolina, Diversified Finance Network LLC out of Dallas, Texas, known as Mark and Charlotte Carroll, and Odane Faith Publishing from, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The three E's of Stevie B's media production, it is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate, we want to edify, we want to encourage you in the study of God's Word. And that will conclude our program announcements. Stay tuned for What a Word from the Lord radio show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. It ain't easy. No. Sometimes it gets hard down here, Lord. Sometimes it gets rough.
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank my both of my speakers on the show tonight, Edward Keaton and my co-host, Isa Mullins, and my special guest in the community corner, Juan Lansford. I certainly appreciate everyone who participates on the show this evening. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to be able to hear these fine lessons uh, during the week and to just be blessed by the word going forth. This is my prayer, ladies and gentlemen, that these lessons and the things that were said on this broadcast this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened because you're not only tuned in to this radio show, but you've given yourself over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continued blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real, real good. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. On behalf of my co-hosts, Isa Mullen, Shauna Otis, and Lou Gilbert, we really do appreciate your love and support for these radio programs. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. It ain't all good, but it's going to be good. Because I love him. I'm on him. But I'm doing fine. And I trust him. Everything ain't well. But it's going to be swell. In the fullness of time. Everything's going to be fine. Whoa. In the fullness of time. Everything is all right. Sometimes I feel like I'm a rundown man. But I'm looking upward. Cause I know him. I'm trying to be holy. I want to be worthy. So he will know me. I look around me and it seems like evil wins. In the fullness of time. I know everything's going to be fine. Oh, in the fullness. In the fullness of time. Everything is all right. Well, when things don't move the way you want them to, things that you know want to come to you, find their way to another place.
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show, episode 201. God has been around. The Lord's been around. Before the death of the earth. He'll be around to judge you in the end. I want to take my rest, Lord, in the end. I want to do my best. In the end. 